Hello everyone. Welcome back to our video class here at CSEC Math Tutor. In this lesson, we are going to be focused on indices. We want to state the index laws. We want to use index laws to evaluate numerical operations. And we want to use index laws to simplify algebraic expressions. So what we're going to be doing in this lesson is that we're going to be talking about the laws and then we're going to do a lot of questions, both multiple choice and otherwise, to make sure that you get a firm grip on how to apply these laws on questions that you may see on your exam. Let's talk about this algebraic expression first. 5x to the fourth power, what does it actually mean? This part of the expression, the x, we call it the base. So this is the base. The 5, we call it the coefficient. It multiplies the x to the 4th. And the 4 here is what we call the power, the exponent, or the index. So the 4 is either power, exponent, or index. Each of these is interchangeable, and anyone may be used at any time. So let's remember these. This 5 is the coefficient, the x is the base, and the 4 is the power, exponent, or index. Now, let's look at some of the laws of indices. When we are multiplying similar bases, we add the powers or we add the exponents. So, if we are multiplying similar bases, for example, 5 squared times 5 to the third, then we can simply write the base and add the powers. 2 plus 3, and that would give us 5 to the 5. Notice, though, that this only works when we are multiplying similar bases. So, for example, 2 to the third times 3 square. Notice that these two bases are not similar, and because they are not similar, we cannot apply this rule to it. If we wanted the answer for this, we'd have to go work about it a different way, which is to evaluate 2 to the third, and 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. And this would give us an answer of 72. This is how we'd have to evaluate something like this. We cannot apply the index rule to it because it says when multiplying similar bases, we add the powers. And in this example here, these bases are not similar. When we are dividing similar bases, we subtract the powers. So if we are dividing 5 squared divided by let's say 5 to the 12, divided by 5 to the 4, we can simply say 5 to the 12, take away 4, and that would give us 5 to the 8. So if we're dividing similar bases, we subtract the powers. Let's look at a different question here. Let's say we have 3 square divided by 3 square. Now, applying the same division rule where we're dividing and subtracting the powers, we end up 3 square to the 2, 3 to the 2 minus 2, which gives us 3 to the 0. Now let's work this out a different way by saying 3 square divided by 3 square. And that tells us that 3 square is 9 divided by 9, and 9 divided by 9 we know is 1. So when we apply the index rule, we get 3 to the 0. When we apply it in terms of a fraction, we get 9 divided by 9, and that is 1. Which means that these two answers must be the same thing, and they are. 3 to the 0 is equal to 1. And in general, any number except 0 raised to the 0 power is 1. So 5 to the 0 is 1, and 100 to the 0 is still 1. However, 0 to the 0 is undefined. That means it has no meaning in mathematics. Here, if we are raising a power to another power, what we do is that we multiply the powers. So 3 to the 4 multiplied by 8, for example, would be 3 to the 4 times 8. And the final answer here would be 3 to the 4 eighths are 32. We can apply it to products. For example, x, y to the third gives us x to the third, y to the third. Or we can apply it to fractions, for example, 2 over a raised to the square gives us 2 square over a square. And that can be further simplified as 4 over a square. So it works either way. 
when it comes to negative exponents, a number with a negative at base with a negative exponent can be rewritten as a fraction with a positive exponent. Likewise, a fraction with a negative exponent in the denominator can be rewritten as a expression with a positive indices. So let's take, for example, 5 to the minus 1. This is the same thing as saying 1 over 5 to the 1, which is just 1 over 5. Or we can say 1 over 3 to the minus 2 is the same thing as writing 3 to the positive 2 over 1, which is 3 squared. These are important going forward. Now let's talk about um, when we have fractions as powers, fractional exponents. Let's take a nice one. Let's say, for example, 4 to the half multiplied by 4 to the half. This gives us 4 to the half plus half. Because we are multiplying similar bases, we can add the powers, which gives us 4 to the 1. And 4 to the 1 is just 4. This reminds us of something similar because we know that 2 times 2 also gives us 4, which means here that 4 to the half is actually 2. And what it means, therefore, is that 4 to the half is telling us that we can write it 4 to the half as this looks like 4 and a half. Let me re rewrite it a little better. 4 to the half is the same thing as the square root of 4. So, generally, a to the half means the square root of a, and a to the one-third means the cube root of a. We'll be using these later on. Generally, when we have an exponent such as this, a to the m over n, then we are looking at the nth root nth root of a to the m, or we can find it the other way. We can find the n root and then bring it to the m power. Now, let's look at a whole bunch of questions that can give us some more clarity in how we go about um, dealing with them and applying the rules of indices. Let's start with 5 to the minus 2. 5 to the minus 2, it's a negative power. It can be rewritten as 1 over 5 with a positive 2. And that means 1 over 5 times 5, which is 1 over 25. 49 to the half means the square root of 49. And that is just 7. The root of 49 is also negative 7, but we don't need the negative 7 in this case. We only use that when we're solving quadratic equations. Part C. We are multiplying this 6, 6 to the 2 third times 6 to the 2 third times 6 to the 2 third. So we are applying, we are multiplying the same base, um, and therefore we can add the powers. So we can have 6 raised to the 2 third plus 2 third plus 2 third. And that gives us 6 to the 2 third plus 2 third plus 2 third. That's 2 plus 2 plus 2. That's 6 over 3. And 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we have 6 raised to the square. And further evaluating that, 6 squared is 6 times 6, which is 36. Now what about this one? 9 to the half times 8 to the 2 third times 4 to the 0. Well, we know that 9 to the half means the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. What about 8 to the, eight to the 2 third? 8 to the 2 third means that we're going to find that the cube root of 8, the cube root of 8 is 2, and we are going to raise that to the second power, and that becomes 2 squared, which is 4. All right? And you can punch this in your calculator to, to, to test it. And 4 to the 0, remember, any number that is not 0 raised to a 0 power, the answer is 1. So 4 to the 0 actually means 1. So what this is actually saying here is 3 times 4 times 1. And that simply works out to be 12.
Now let's look at some other questions. Simplify the expression 4a to the half multiplied by, in bracket, a to the 5 over 2 minus a to the negative 3 over 2. So this one is deliberately complicated, and we can apply our index rules to it. So we have a here. Notice that they are similar bases, and so we're going to multiply it out. So 4a to the negative half times a to the 5 over 2 minus 4a to the negative half times a to the negative 3 over 2. Now let's try to simplify this as much as we can. Here we are multiplying similar bases, so we add the powers. So it's 4a negative half plus 5 over 2 and minus 4a negative half plus negative 3 over 2. And we're multiplying similar bases. Remember, we add the powers. Now, a negative half plus 5 over 2 gives us the same thing as 5 minus 1. And 5 minus 1 is 4. So here we have 4a to the 4 over 2 minus 4a to the negative 4, adding here over 2. And let's further simplify this a little bit. That gives us 4a squared, 4 divided by 2 is 2, minus 4a to the negative 2. Now, this one has a negative power, and the question says state your answer using positive indices. We can write this in positive indices because this is the same thing as saying 4 times 1 over a squared, which means the same thing as 4 over a squared. So we can rewrite this answer as 4a square minus 1 minus rather 4 over a square. Now this one is a little simpler because here we are multiplying p to the third times q square times p times q to the five. And all we need to do here is write down our bases p. So we're multiplying similar bases, so we add the powers. The power for this p is 1, so 3 plus 1. And q raised to the 2 plus 5. And the final answer for this is p to the 4th, 3 plus 1, 4. And 5 plus 2, 7 for the q. In this one, we can further simplify it by noticing that we have a multiplication in the numerator and a division in the denominator. So let's multiply the top. 4 times 3 here gives us 12. <clears throat> and let's write our base and add the powers. Since we're multiplying similar bases, 2 plus 4 gives us 6. And we're dividing that by c to the third. Now, when we're dividing similar bases, what do we do? we divide, we subtract the powers. So we're going to write 12c to the 6 minus 3, and that gives us a final answer of 12c to the third power. Let's move on now and look at some multiple choice questions. Because indices has applications both on your paper 1 and your paper 2. And we have some questions here that will give you an idea as to what to expect on your multiple choice paper. So here we are multiplying 3x squared times 2x to the third. So we write down our 3 times 2. And we are going to add now, write our base, and we're going to add our powers. So we have 2 plus 3. And so what this gives us in the end is multiplying our coefficients, 3 times 2, 6 and adding the exponents, we end up with x to the 2 plus 3, which is 5. And our answer, therefore, is a. This one is just a simple application of the rule. We write down our base, and we add together our powers. When we are multiplying similar bases, we add the powers. So the answer becomes simply, 3 to the x plus y, and in this case, our answer is d. What about this one? Here, we are taking a power to 
to another power, which means that we need to multiply powers. Notice that the 2 is on the outside of the bracket. So it's 2 times a square raised to the third power. So 2 times 3 there. And b raised to the, the power of b here is 1. So 1 times 3. This gives us 2a. Two, 2 times 3 is 6. And b to the third. And therefore, you can see your answer is B, which is 2, A to the 6, B third. Look at D and notice that if you made the mistake of putting 2 in the bracket and not seeing that 2 is not in the bracket, then this would be your answer. Well, the correct answer here is 2, A to the 6, B to the third, because the 2 is not in the bracket at all. Let's look at another one or three more for that matter. Here, we have a nice question that says 2a to the third plus 2a raised to the third power. Now we can evaluate this section using indices. So this is actually saying 2a to the third plus 2 to the third, a to the third. <clears throat> but remember, we can only apply our index rule if we are multiplying similar bases or dividing similar bases. Here, notice that you have a plus in the question. So we cannot apply the index rules here. All that we can do here is simplify this. So we can have 2a to the third plus 2 to the third. We know is 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. a to the third. And we can add the coefficients here. So 8 plus 2 gives us 10a to the third. That then is our answer. So remember that we cannot apply indices rule to this whole question. We can apply it to a part of it, but not the whole of it. What about this one now? 2a to the third power. We can apply the index rule straight ahead and say um, we are raising a power to another power. Remember the power of the 2 here is 1. The power of the a is 1. So we're actually saying 2 to the 1 times 3 and a to the 1 times 3, which gives us 2 to the 3rd, and a to the 3rd. Further simplifying this gives us 8a to the 3rd power. We could also write this out the long way using 2a times 2a times 2a, and 2 twos are 4, 4 twos are 8, and then add the powers of the a, 1 plus 1 plus 1, and that gives us 3. So notice your answer here is D, 8A to the third. Now what about this question here? <clears throat> here we have X is equal to negative 2, Y is equal to 3, and T is equal to 2. Now let's substitute them into this and see what happens. It says X over Y to the T. So X over Y, X is negative 2 over y is 3, and we're raising that to the t, and t is 2. So here we have negative 2, which is x, over y, which is 3, raised to the second power, which is t, and that simply tells us that we can multiply the whole thing out, negative 2 over 3 times negative 2 over 3, which gives us 4 over 9. or negative 2 square over 3 square, which gives us 4 over 9. And that is this answer. Remember that you can find more past and practice papers on our website, csecmathtutor.com, in the past and practice paper sections. Subscribe, share with somebody who needs to learn more about this topic, and continue to learn and grow as you study. Thank you for watching.